Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 96. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube or on Spotify, Apple Music, or on whatever platform you're listening to the podcast. And be sure to check us out at theloudest.com on the planet, knac.com. My guest for this episode is vocalist Robin McCulley. Robin's been on a tear as of late releasing his first solo album in over 20 years in 2021 through Frontiers Music called Standing on the Edge. He's back with another solo album coming out on February 17th called Alive. In between his solo efforts, Robin works on a project called Black Swan, also on Frontiers Music. Black Swan features Reb Beach from Winger, Jeff Pilsen from Dawkin and Foreigner, Matt Starr from Ace Freely and Mr. Big. After nearly 40 years in the business, Robin shows no sign of slowing down. In fact, he seems to be amping it up. So here he is, vocalist Robin McCulley. Today we're talking about your upcoming solo album, Alive. It comes out February 17th on Frontiers Music. Your last solo album, Standing on the Edge, came out in 2021, and you sort of had to be finessed or convinced to make a solo album after 20 years. I would imagine with the second one, you're a little more energized, a little more creative. I love that (laughs) finestered. I'm going to steal that. Um, Yeah, um, we know the story, how that went. Uh, Response was was great, overwhelming. And um, stuck another Black Swan record in between that with Generation Mind. And... uh, out the door and into a live, which was a huge amount of fun to do. Just started thinking about it differently because we got rid of standing on the edge. And we experimented a little bit with that, with different writers that I had spent some time in the past with. So a bunch of new writers on this one, some similar. Um, great production again with Alessandro Lovecchio, just did a great job. And my favorite bunch of musicians with Andrea Cerveso and Nicholas Papapico just slamming it. So um, I'm really happy with it. New single out tomorrow, uh, second single from the record. So Alive has been, as a single, has been so well received. So I couldn't be happier. It's really, really cool. Now, a lot of the Frontiers music releases are sort of done back and forth because everybody's around the world and whatnot. And certainly with your first solo album, there was the lockdown. But have you had a chance to meet Alessandro and the backing band yet? Yes, I did actually. Uh, we when I was out with Schenker, I did the whole European stuff in the in spring into the middle, just right up to summer. And um, Alessandro was actually performing with one of the other frontier bands, Yorn, and he was playing keys with Yorn. And uh, we got to hang at the same hotel and chew the fat and and discuss the plan of action <laughs> for this one. So yeah, it was great because you know you get to work as we do you know, off your laptop these days. And, and just like I'm talking to you and then suddenly, you you know, it's like traveling, you get to touch and, and feel and eat the food. And it was, it's, it, was it was really, he's so plus he's a, he's a freshly made dad for 2023, just a new baby. So congratulations to the Del Vecchios. You know, we have a new engineer and a new producer in our midst all of a sudden. <laughs> I think he's referring to the little one as the little, the little one. Yes. The little one. And so that's really cool. And he's a busy man. Um, I'm not sure he sleeps, but he's, you know, he's, he's able to get on with life. No pun intended. Um, and it's really cool. And the, the guys are awesome. And um, yeah, I think it's a great record. I'm, I'm really happy with this one. So, um, you know, it'll go out there and it'll do its stuff and we'll, we'll keep going. So thanks Alive. for that. Alive couldn't be a more appropriate title for the album. I've been listening to it quite a bit, and there's a lot of positivity and overcoming challenges and faith and not giving up on yourself throughout the entire album. Yeah, and I think that's we, you know, it's it's a changing world. I think we've seen that. We came out of pandemic. Who'd have thunk it, you know? You know, all of that stuff was thrown at us, and we go, no way, man. You can't bring the world to its knees. Well, we did, they did, whoever. And uh, we are, as a human race, we are very, very resilient. And that's kind of where I took Alive. And I went, you know, you can throw the kitchen sink at me, but we will still come through the fog and we'll be bigger and better and stronger for it. And 
you know, Ukraine, um, so many shootings going on in the country, people just losing their minds, you know, and their souls. And it's, uh, that's kind of where I took the album on a day-to-day -day basis because there was so much to, to drag from what was going on socially. It was hard not to, uh, to sort of not include it in a, in a big portion of the writing, not directed at anybody, just but a basic overview and, and where I fit in the middle of the, of the fog. And uh, yeah, it came together really well. You know, it was a, they gave me the, they gave me the info. I just wrote it. <laughs> I didn't have to go searching too far for any inspiration, you know? So um, yeah, I hope people listen to it and um, understand what we're talking about and, and alive, you know, thankful and grateful. Stay positive. We can do this and we can do it together. That's more to the point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, uh, dealing with fear is kind of something we all uh, were a part of during this uh, contentious time over the last couple of years. And you're certainly spreading a message of, you know, getting beyond that. Yeah. You know, and I think we just I think we all know it's not that we need to be told more about it. But but, um, you know, that's where my head was at from one song to the next. And um, uh, as I said, we, we're all very resilient in our own way. And um, I'm happy I have a good family grounding underneath me and uh, I'll keep that with me and we'll, we'll keep going, you know. And a new single out tomorrow. A second, second track will be dropped tomorrow um, from the Alive record and uh, a very interesting video. <laughs> it's like a mini movie. So um, we took it a slightly different direction for this one. And it's, you know, that song is basically fighting your own demons, you know, it's like listening, you know, I'm sure you, you've heard it so many times, listen to your gut. And then, you know, there are those who listen to their gut, but their gut takes them down the, the dark alley, you know, so it's that sort of stuff. So interesting. It, it's an interesting video. So uh, comes out tomorrow. Second track, uh, feel like hell. So <laughs> again, very appropriate for the time to know. <laughs> So we've gone from alive to feel like hell. That's good. Feel like hell, feel like hell, but it's very positive at the end. You know, it's like we'll still be alive at the end of it. So, <laughs> well, you were still you were pretty creative with the first video. I thought uh, with sort of the energy and the electricity, and then yeah, you I know, um, you, do next. you know, one of the worst things they can say to me is, "Hey, do you have any ideas for the artwork?" And I'm going, well, "Of course I do." <laughs> and when uh, earlier on in the writing, um, I had pretty much settled on Alive being the title track and what we would do with it. And, you know, I love old Hollywood movies. I love the vampire movies, which we've discussed in the past. And I love the Frankenstein movies. And I thought, okay, Alive, what do we do? So I went down the sort of the Frankenstein path in respect to the artwork. And I went, okay, let's, let's send a, a charge into this thing. And that's basically where I took it. I wanted to create an artwork that was kind of like an old laboratory with a, an incubator, you know, and you put the hands in and the two microphones and, zzz, and, and off we go. It's just crazy stuff, you know, but they're going, really? <laughs> you know, and that's what you get. If you deal with me, that's what you get. It's never going to be. The photographer says the same thing. He goes, why does it always have to be different? But I love it. <laughs> and I'm, because I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. At, at least I try not to and give it a little twist. At least a little twist, you know. So um, one of the cool reports from the uh, video director was he said, um, I think of all the videos I've shot with Frontiers, I actually think this is my personal favorite. And I went, I'll take that, you know. So and, and that's the new one, the one that's coming out tomorrow, because it is really like a mini movie. And uh, we shot it in the streets of Hollyweird very late at night. And um, it, it's cool. We got we got ready-made props on the street. We didn't have to. We didn't have to go looking for them. It was really cool. So I hope people love it. And uh, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> and now, are you going to be able to perform alive at some point? That's the good thing. I can actually say yes because uh, Frontiers are going to uh, have resurrected their Frontiers festivals, 
um, and they will put one on in Milan this year. We were just talking about it with Alessandro and some other, and Johnny Gioli earlier, and Ronnie Romero early, earlier this morning, and uh, figure out different ways of making it interesting. And so I'll have my band in there um, that's on the record, and we'll be... We'll be blasting out a lot of the tunes, maybe maybe even some Black Swan songs too, because it's very hard to get all those guys together. But I'm hoping Reb will be in town for that one as well. So it's going to be a blast. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Probably going to be a busy night for Alessandro because he's in almost every band he on will, Frontier. So just tell you, he will, he, he's already, his, his, his new baby boy is already in music school. And I, I think he may be coming in playing cello or something. I'm not sure, but he will be in there. <laughs> or he'll be engineering for sure. Yeah, exactly. it will be a busy night. Yeah, a busy night. Are you still doing the uh, icons of classic rock shows from time to time in Las Vegas? Um, I'm, that's actually rating the rock fault. Uh, I am not. I decided after uh, seven years and 1,500 shows almost, um, um, it was time for me to stay home. And, 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 and I got busy with Schenker Fest and Schenker uh, uh, um, uh, European tours. Um, uh, there is the 10th anniversary coming up in March, which I believe I'll be a part of. Um, and... There is a an other classic rock uh, performance called Icons of Rock, and I I was just in Bolivia with them right before Christmas, and that's a an amazing an amazing uh, it, they play arenas and they play and it's just I I love all that stuff. It's like Vegas is is fantastic, but you forget who you are after a time because you're you're stuck with that sort of residency. And I, I'm going, I want to go back out to do what 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 I was born in bread to do I, I i like the festivals i like the i like the change of atmosphere the different the different scenarios and and so um when i went back out with the schenker fest etc i went oh my god i missed this so much you know so i decided to step back from the vegas thing and and get back to what what i do and, and there's another cast in there they're, they're not short of people so i have great people in there so yeah so what are your plans for live music outside of the uh, Frontiers Music Festivals? Are you going to be doing something with Shanker or Black Swan or uh, there's, something there's else? Potentially some Shanker stuff coming up. I can't say too much about it. He's planning something something again. He, you know, he likes to change things up a little bit. Um, and um, I'll be doing more of the uh, Icons of Rock uh, performances as the year goes on, uh, getting ready for the festivals. And I believe... I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, but I believe there, I'm not sure when we'll start, but I believe there's another Black Swan record in the, in the works as well, which I'm very excited about because I just love that project. It's, it's, it's meat and potatoes. It's good. <laughs> and, you know, the last Black Swan album, Generation Mind, Generation uh, Mind. Yeah. it was a fantastic album. It got great reviews everywhere. Yeah. You guys are all pros going way back in the day. And, uh, yeah. This has to be the most the, the busiest you've been, at least from a recording standpoint in, in yeah. all your I don't career. Think, I don't, George, I don't think I've ever had so much fun. I mean, you what took so long? It's great. I'm I'm really enjoying where it's at. Um, um the music is great. It's what I it's what it's just I I love being in it. It's it's I feel very energized by the whole thing. I feel very alive, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm loving I'm loving where it's at and it and it's it's only getting better. I should be slowing down, but I feel like, you know, I put more gas into the tank and I'm it's forward motion, you know. So I'm blessed. I'm I'm very happy. Absolutely. The kind of the big music news in the last 24 hours oh. is the passing of guitar legend Jeff Beck. And I was just curious if you ever shared the stage with him or been out to I, see your shows or sadly sadly i actually i made a post this morning because i think the first time i actually really tuned into beck was when he was with rod stewart in that python lee jackson period where they did a broken dream and i went oh my god listen to that and so i referenced that this morning and from that point i was i was in listening to jeff beck and and, and recently over the recent years he did he did some great stuff with uh, beth hart singing that I just absolutely just love that her rawness against what he does. And it's just, oh my God, I, I, I don't know if we'll ever, if we'll ever see anybody. He was just, 
he was on a he was on a very different level. I mean, there's so many great guitarists, but he just he did something that nobody else was doing. It's just that that tone and just that guitar was there were just it's it's such a cliche to say they were one, but but oh my god. Yeah, I mean we all we all run our course and everything, and it's it's a it's a very very sad passing. But his legacy will never die. That's for absolute sure because there'll be guitarists coming along that will just feel that they really need to, you know, style themselves. And I don't know if anybody will ever be able to capture that because, you know, an original is an original. And a, a really sad loss, a sad day for the music industry. You know, I think we've been saying that one too many times recently, you know. It's you absolutely. Know? Right, every day is like, oh, what a sad loss. And I'm going, oh, man. And, you know, the sad, the, the, the sad thing is that, you know, we all get older and we, we can't go on forever. And whatever the cause is, you know, it's inevitable. So love it and cherish it while we have it, you know. I feel like that, that your generation and his generation of musicians are really going to be the last great, <laughs> long, 50-year career musicians in an industry, at least over here in the U.S., that just, you know, chews them up and spits them out. Yeah. Um, you know, it has to happen. It's going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it, you know. Um, the tree will grow and the, the tree will be cut down and then there'll be a new tree. And, and, and um, but where that tree was planted, there'll always be a marker and that's never going to go away. So, you know, the old adage of rock will never die. It just won't when it, when it's that sort of quality and, and, and a class act, it's just, we, we will, he'll be around a lot longer than, than, than I will live it out. He'll be around forever. So he may be gone in, 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 in the, in the flesh, but, but his music's not going anywhere. That's for sure. Not going anywhere. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, we'll we'll be talking Jeff Beck for a very, 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 very long time. And generations to come will be referencing back to him. So, yeah, he's uh, he just got a new lease to life. <laughs> That's the way I like to think about it. You know, um, I think positive. He, he'll be around for a long time. Thank you, Jeff Beck, I say. On a uh, more positive note, you hit a milestone yourself. The 35th anniversary of Perfect Timing was uh, a few months ago. Uh, what do you kind of remember of putting that album together and the response that it received? I remember some positive. I remember a lot of negative because of my relation of what I supposedly did to destroy Michael Schenker's music because suddenly he was charting that he'd never done before and he was now more commercial than he'd never been before. And instead of people going, wow, that's cool. Shankers on MTV and VH1. And so they were going, oh, dude, can you believe he's playing that shit? <laughs> you know, so um, it was, it was, it was, you know, I was brought in for the, you know, Michael needs to make the American charts. And I'm going, well, what do you want me to do? You know, you, you know, pay your way into MTV. MTV was, hasn't been the same since the beginning. Mm. It was great in the beginning. It was, it was supposed to be music television. It was supposed to be music television. And it came out the gates pretty good. And then it just went, wow, where did it go? You know, to reality shows? That's not music, you know. Uh, not the music we were making. Uh, and it was great. And it was, I think we all learned very quickly, it was, it was a vehicle that everybody wanted to jump onto, uh, only to realize that, you know, <laughs> it was going downhill with no brakes. <laughs> You know, but um, there again lies the resilience of, of the bands and you know, on all of these periods and categories that they put us into hair metal, and glam metal. And it's like, you know, the only reason they did that was because they couldn't wear, they didn't know where to find us in Tower Records. So they had to put us into a bin with an arrow pointing to it so that they would know where to find us. And it just made it easier for the marketing people and all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, whatever whatever, you know, you just, you make the music and you, you have fun doing it and then you move on to the next one and, and, and there it is. So um, we needed MTV, but not as much as MTV really needed us. Of course, we didn't know that at the time, you know? And then of course, record companies and studios went, went by the by and everybody's sitting at home going, dude, if I had known that I could do all of this at home, <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Um, so it's funny how the world turns, you know, and we're still making music and where's MTV now, man. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. It's all, it was all good. All, all positive. It, everything is there for a reason. And somebody said, what is it? Everything in its place and a place for everything. So there's room for everybody, George. Yeah. And the music still lives on in you. It lives in, in Michael Schenker and it lives in, in Steve Mann. And they're all still out there playing these oh, songs as well. Absolutely killing it. Killing it. Yeah. And I'm glad to say it. And I'm glad to be part of it. And, um, you know, the day will come. That day is not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for tomorrow, you have new music coming from your latest solo album. The name of the album is Alive. It's coming out on February 17th on Frontiers Music. Fantastic album, Robin. So got thank a you. lot to be proud of. Awesome. I appreciate it, George. A pleasure thank, to see you again. Absolutely. Pleasure to see you as well. And thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Once again, I want to thank Robin McCulley for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out his latest solo album alive out february 17th through frontiers music head over to your favorite music streaming app take a listen to what's available if you like what you hear go out and buy a copy support the artist for all things robin mcculley head over to his website robinmcculley.com if you want to find out more about the last black swan album generation mind I interviewed Robin McCulley for episode 39 of the Rock is George podcast. 